Andrea. I wanted to do a vlog today about things about medical school that I didn't know in college that I wish I had known when I was in college or just things that I've kind of discovered along the way. Um, maybe it'll help some of you if you're pre-med or in, in college or thinking about medical school. So for me, I don't have anyone in my family who's a physician. My parents aren't doctors. And so I really didn't have anyone to ask particularly how it all works and how med school goes and residency and questions like that. Um, and I shadowed quite a few doctors uh, while I was in high school and college, but still you don't exactly want to ask them like, so how does this all work? And can you explain to me? You know, I mean, you know, they're busy. And so sometimes these questions just go unanswered and you think you'll figure them out, which you do, but maybe I can help you. So uh, I wanted to kind of start and give you a rundown of how it all works. Um, the timeline because this legitimately is stuff I didn't know which sounds funny now but I really didn't know it so medical school is four years I'm sure you know that um, your first two years in most schools are generally uh, book work where you learn all the science anatomy physiology microbiology immunology um, pharmacology all those kinds of things that you need to know and then at the end of those two years you take your boards you take step one of your boards which is a huge eight-hour test that tests everything you learned in those first two years. That's most schools. Some schools are different. Um, for example, I know Duke has you take a, a research year, and so they only have one year of book, of book work, and then they do their clinical year, and then they do a research year, and then they take boards or something like that. Um, so some schools are a little different in how they arrange it all, but generally those first two years, you don't spend much time in uh, the hospital or in the clinic. You really don't. You might learn how to do a physical and take a history from a patient, but that's kind of it. So then third and fourth year uh, are years that you spend doing clinicals, so you get to experience all the different specialties. Uh, you get to rotate through the hospital, through different clinics, uh, meet lots of different faculty and residents, and it's great. So then after you graduate medical school, you have an MD. You are an MD but you're not licensed to practice any particular kind of medicine. I think maybe there are some specialties you can go into, um, like flight medicine through the army or something like that. I might be wrong, that you can go right into those without having to do a residency. But most, you after medical school, you then have to go on to do a residency. So that first year after medical school, the very first year of your residency is called your intern year. That's something that I didn't know. I had no idea what an intern was. I didn't know what that meant. All that means is that you are a first year resident. Some residency programs have intern year kind of built in to their program. Other residency programs don't have an intern year. So for example, I want to do ophthalmology and ophthalmology does not have that intern year built into it. So I will have to apply separately to other programs for my very first year and then I'll start ophthalmology the next year. So my second year after graduating. I hope that all makes sense. So then you do your residencies, which can last anywhere from three to five, six, seven years. So um, a lot of programs are four years total, including your intern year, um, quite a few. And then if you want to do some kind of surgical subspecialty or general surgery, that's when you get into five or six year programs. And then if you want to do a fellowship and specialize even further, so say you want to be a pediatric cardiologist, um, or a GI doctor, you would do either pediatric residency first or internal medicine residency first, and then do a fellowship, which is one or two more years of extra training in cardiology or GI or whatever it is you're interested in. So that's after that. But your whole time as a resident, you get paid. You make a salary. It's um, around forty or fifty thousand dollars a year, enough to kind of live off of and maybe start paying off your student loans for medical school. So you can count on making some money in residency, but it's definitely not um, enough to pay off all your loans and things like that. So then during your residency, you'll take step three of your boards. Um, I didn't mention step two. You take it your fourth year of medical school. So I'll take that in a couple months. Um, not, not quite as big a deal as long as you pass it. Um, and then you'll take step three of your boards in residency and then you have to keep getting board certified if, if you want to be a board certified physician forever. Every 10 years, you have to retake your boards. Um, it's never ending. So that's another point I wanted to discuss. So when you're in college and you're studying so hard for medical school and you think that 
as soon as you get accepted into medical school, then it's over, then you can take a breath. No, that's not true. The testing and the stress, it never ends, ever. You have so many exams in medical school that are more important than the MCAT. Your boards are more important than the MCAT, I promise. Um, and, and it never ends. You have to keep taking these tests and keep proving yourself over and over, even after you've been accepted to medical school. So I thought that it would end, that I would stop having to prove myself and work on my resume and make sure I had all of these things to show how successful I am. Uh, I thought that would end after college, and that is not true. Uh, you're always competing for things, and some fields are much more competitive than others, I'm sure you know. Um, but that was, I, I think I was disappointed when I realized that I had to keep taking tests that were just as stressful as the MCAT and maybe more important in my future life. Another thing I didn't know, and maybe I didn't shadow enough physicians to learn this, so I would recommend shadowing quite a bit, but I didn't realize how much time physicians spend not with patients. So you spend a ridiculous amount of time writing notes. Uh, you have to write a note after you see every patient or dictate your note um, or write a note after every surgery. I don't, I just didn't know how important that was. Um, there's a ton of paperwork. You have to like code all the billing. You don't think about this kind of stuff. You're like, oh, I just wanna be a doctor and save people and help people and it's wonderful, which it is. It totally is, I promise. Um, but I just didn't realize that you had to code for all the different types of things you did while they were in the office or work on your paperwork for your hospital or your office. It's just, it's a lot of things um, that you don't think about and you think you're gonna spend all day seeing patients or all day in surgery, which sometimes you might, um, but that's not always the case. You really, as a resident, you spend a ton of time seeing patients, but as an attending physician, especially in an academic facility, maybe not so much. It's a different lifestyle, uh, but I think that's what makes it great. I think uh, something that I love about medical school is that I've kind of thought of med school as my job, and so my role as a medical student is very different than what my role as an intern will be, which is very different than what my role as a resident will be, which is super different than what you're like when you're an actual attending, when you finally make it and you're 35 and you're finally a doctor. Um, <laughs> uh, so everything kind of changes. You only are a resident for four or five years and then, and then your duties and what your day-to-day -day is like is different. So you think you wanna be a doctor so badly, but you forget that it's gonna take you like 12 more years to get there and you have all these other steps to enjoy along the way. And uh, I know it sounds terrible, but I think it's really gratifying. Uh, I wish I had known some of these details when I was in college just so that I knew what I was getting myself into. Uh, so I hope this helps any of you. And if you have any other questions, just let me know.